Jose Okadiz, Wichita Fire Department, last name is spelled O-C-A-D-I-Z. National Burn Awareness Week is February 5th through the 11th. Wichita Fire Department and Safe Kids of Wichita are reminding parents and caregivers it doesn't take a fire to burn a child. In fact, the most common type of burn to children is a scald burn. Scald burns are caused by hot liquids and steam and can be just as severe and devastating. Here today is Rhonda Lusk from Safe Kids of Wichita to discuss about the National Scald Prevention Campaign. Good morning. Uh, Rhonda Lusk, last name spelling L-U-S-K, and I'm with Via Christi and Safe Kids Wichita area. So we're here today to talk about Burn Prevention Week, and we want to make sure we thank our uh, first responders and also the Wichita Fire Department for all the work they do um, in prevention and educating the public. Uh, we're here to announce a new program from the National Scald Campaign. It's called Flash Spat Splash. And just as Jose said, it doesn't take a fire to cause a burn to a child. We know that an overwhelming majority, about 84% of scalds to children occur in the home. And when we get to the age of under five, we know that rate goes up to about 95%. Scalds can happen in an instant. So there's several things that we want to tell parents and remind them how to be safe with their children in their home. So liquid and steam are just as dangerous as fire and it only takes two seconds of exposure to 148 degree water or uh, liquid to cause a burn. So it's very important that we know the risks and look out for those. So here are some tips just to prevent scald injuries in your home. Set your water temperature, uh, your hot water heater at 120 degrees or just below the medium setting for that. Uh, run your hand through bath water to make sure it's the proper temperature before you put your child in. Make sure you use the back burners of your stove if you're cooking. And when you're cooking, make sure to turn the handles back to the stove so that the kids can't reach those. You want to set a no zone for kids around the stove, about three feet for smaller children, so that they know that they can't be close to the stove when you're cooking. One important thing for parents to think about is when you are carrying your child, make sure you don't have anything hot in your hands, like a hot cup of coffee or a hot liquid. You want to make sure and keep hot drinks away from the edge of the cabinets or tables so that kids can't reach up and grab anything and pull it over on them. And then we want to make sure that we actively supervise children. Make sure that we're aware of the surroundings, we're looking out for kids, and we're making sure that they're safe. So take just a few minutes around the house, remember these tips, and hopefully you and your children will be safe. Thanks. Hey, Ms. Rhonda, hmm? what's the name of that program again? Splash? Flash? Splash. Splash? Splash, yes. <clears throat> There's even a website, too. It's flashsplash.org. Yes. That they could visit. A lot of those prevention tips for close parents. Is there anything you want to say to the young kids who might be watching what, what they do? Yes, and especially those kids who are doing uh, a little cooking on their own or after school, uh, they come home and they start uh, maybe cooking something. We want to make sure that those kids are aware of the. Um, dangers, especially with microwave foods. We know that they heat up on the inside, so make sure you stir up those um, contents and test them before you um, eat them, as well as um, any steam coming off of items. If you pull something out of a microwave, like popcorn, make sure and open it away from you. That steam can be just as dangerous as hot liquids. Could you spell your first name for us? Uh -huh. It's Rhonda, R-O-N-D-A. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. We've got several interwatch items to go over today. Uh, the first one that we're going to talk about is a big arrest that Wichita Police did last night on uh, seven recent robberies. And then the second one I'll cover today is the uh, aggravated battery of shooting that occurred in the 1100 block of North Broadway last night. So we'll talk about the arrest of the recent robberies. So last night at about 9.21 p.m., the O'Reilly's Auto Parts store in the 3100 block of East Pawnee was robbed by two unknown men at the time. Two officers were being proactive, and they were bound and determined that they were going to catch these robbers. So these two officers decided to go sit off the O'Reilly's in the 4800 block of East Lincoln shortly after that robbery. 
knowing that several of these stores have been targeted for robberies lately. After they set up a very short time, seconds after sitting across the street, the officers observed two males exit the store with their faces covered. The officers gave chase on foot and they were able to capture one of the male suspects. Evidence was recovered and investigators booked a 22 year old male into jail for seven counts of robbery, one for each of these locations and I'll give you the location and the case number. First one case number 17 C 005949. This occurred at 1200 South Rock at the Circle K and this occurred back on January 27th. Second one, case number 17C00-6361. This occurred in the 4800 block of East Lincoln. It was the O'Reilly's Auto Parts and it occurred on January 28th. Next, 17C00-6866. 4600 South Broadway, again the O'Reilly's. And this occurred on January 30th. Sure, sorry, the 4600 West South Broadway is 6866. 17C00-6866. Okay, next one, 17C008022. This occurred in the 4100 block of West Central. O'Reilly's Auto Parts, February 4th. 17C008222. 3300 North Rock Road, the Auto Zone. This occurred on February 5th. 17C008494. 4800 East Lincoln is last night's robbery at the O'Reilly's and occurred on February 6th. And the one where the mail was caught, case number 17C008495. I'm sorry, the one on East Lincoln is the one that he was caught. This one was the one that first came out on East Pawnee, 3100 East Pawnee. So he was apprehended at 4800 East Lincoln under case number 8494. Now the second suspect is still outstanding and we would welcome any information that leads to this suspect's identity and arrest. We'd like to remind you that you can call Crime Stoppers at 267-2111. All tips are anonymous. You can rena remain anonymous and you could be eligible for a cash reward if we discover the identity or if your tip leads to the arrest of the second suspect. So the East Pawnee was robbed at about 921. Uh-huh. And then a short time later at the other O'Reilly's on East Lincoln. Is correct. That correct. Yes. So the officer set up on the East Lincoln address just right after that uh, first robbery came out. And then within seconds of them setting up is when the um, both suspects exited the store. They gave chase on foot and they were able to apprehend one of them. So How was very your reaction to knowing that this uh, solved at least seven robberies? Exactly. I mean, we, we are very proud, obviously, of these officers. We're proud of our whole department. Um, you know, th this takes a lot of time and effort, but for these officers to be proactive and be determined uh, that they were going to stop these uh, is very, you know, we, we can't thank them enough. You know, they, I know that they just want to do their job, but um, I'm sure everybody that's involved in the whole community is, is thankful, you know, that somebody is in custody for these robberies. But, uh, yeah, we'll continue to look for the second suspect. And uh, there's obviously several other robberies, the ones that we talked about yesterday at the quick shop that were done by different individuals. And we will continue to look for them, and, and they will be arrested as well as soon as can we. You, can you go into detail about what you found on them? No, we're not going to go into detail on the evidence. Uh, there was evidence from uh, the East Lincoln um, where they had just left the store. There was evidence uh, on them, on that individual from that store. And then during the investigation is what we were able to determine that he was involved in all seven of them. I think I saw a picture of a suspect at the Circle K. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that this, that's the same? Is it yes, connected? yes, he was arrested for that. The okay. Circle K robberies, uh, the surveillance video that we put out yesterday on Facebook, uh, yesterday afternoon, and uh, the individual that we took in custody last night uh, was um, booked for that robbery at the Circle K that happened uh, back on the 27th of January. Can you give us like, that picture on them that they were so outstanding? 
Sure. I, I don't know exactly the difference uh, between the two suspects. I know uh, he was a black male, approximately six foot, uh, medium build, and I know they were wearing dark clothing, both of them. So as, as far as which one was caught uh, and which one is still outstanding, I'm, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, black male, uh, I want to say uh, 18 to 20s, uh, medium build, dark clothing. Mm -hmm. You said a short foot chase? Yeah, very short foot chase. They just gave ch uh, chase on foot, and they were able to apprehend one of them, and then one of them was able to get away. But somebody out there knows who that individual is, and like I said, call Crime Stoppers, uh, get some cash, no questions asked, anonymous, so we'll never know your name, and uh, you can turn in the other robber. That I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he's cooperative or not. Okay. I wanted to go over the shooting that happened last night on Broadway as well. That case number is 17C008491. 17C008491 was an aggravated battery firearm. Occurred in the 1100 block of North Broadway on February 6th at 9.30 p.m. On February 6th, officers responded to a shooting call in the 1100 block of North Broadway. Upon arrival, officers contacted a 40-year-old male who had a gunshot wound to his left leg. He was treated and released from an area hospital. He was uncooperative with officers, so right now we don't know where this occurred or any details about the shooting. We would ask if anybody was in the area last night around 930 in the 1100 block of North Broadway and saw anything suspicious that would provide us any details on the shooting we would welcome that information and you can call investigators at 268-4407 with any information that you have. Okay, that's all I got today. Thanks guys, see you tomorrow.